quick show. How many of you here like hot and spicy food? That many? <laughs> Good. You're gonna all in the right place today because this is the hottest show on television today. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do one of my favorite dish. Actually, this is a favorite dish for many people. I call this Sichuan spicy boneless chicken. Of course, in China, they just stir fry the chicken with bone, but here you can buy chicken without bone or you can debone it yourself, doesn't make any difference, okay? Here, I start with about three chicken breasts. Some I already cut up and marinate, and I want to quickly show you how fast you can cut it up, particularly for those who want to have the skin on. Now, this is how you cut it with the skin on. You hold onto it like this and you go, one, you see this? Cut it up, cut it up like this. You, instead of cutting it up, you actually chop it. This way, the whole piece will, with the chicken skin still intact. But for most of us here, we don't care about the skin. So we will remove these and give, put in a gift wrap and give it to our neighbors. <laughs> and then, how fast you can cut it. Stack them all up, you don't do it one by one. Cut it up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Set it up, and you transfer it like this. Look, look at this. One, two, three. <laughs> See that? Now, in the meantime, I am gonna heat up my wok. Heat up my wok because I wanna get ready. Marinate the chicken for a little while. Normally, you should use a chopstick or fork to marinate. Here, I have about two tablespoons of soy sauce and about one teaspoon of cornstarch, okay? And then, set aside for about anywhere from half an hour to two hours, okay? Now, if you have time, you can do it ahead of time, you can do it the night before. That means you can put it in the fridge, okay? And then, in the meantime, I also want to make sure my wok is hot, and I have approximately two teaspoons of oil over here. Get a pot holder ready, and then in the meantime, I'm gonna cut up some garlic. This is how easy it is to remove the skin, see that? And then, minced garlic. Ha! <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> also, use a tiny bit of ginger. Set it aside. Also, use a tiny bit of green onion. This is how you mince green onion. You see this? This is another technique. Everybody should see. Set it aside, put all the spicy ingredients. Wow, hot and spicy. See this? Look at this. Very hot. And then put the chicken. Look at this. Stir. Okay. Stir this. Make sure allow this to cook uniformly. And then, get ready all the spices and seasoning. I have one tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame seed oil, a tiny bit of chili paste. This is hot stuff. About one teaspoon. Two teaspoon of Shaoxing wine, and a tiny, tiny bit of sesame seed oil and you stir, and you stir. Wow, look at this. And then, for those who love hot and spicy food, you can put a tiny bit of chili. This is gonna be so hot. I promise you, hot and spicy. Now, everybody know, I think, the thing is, the degree of hotness depends on how many of this you put in, because if you put too much, what happens is, it's so hot and so spicy that you cannot really appreciate the spice. So you should just add enough when it's almost done. Thicken it up with a tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch solution. What makes this particular dish exciting is, not only that, I also put a tiny, tiny bit of vinegar, rice vinegar, about a tablespoon. What makes, you don't want this? Anybody want this? I'm gonna keep it for myself. <laughs> this is what you call, look at this. 
Wow, look at this. When this is nice and ready, we are going to get rid of these and we will serve. Now, we're going to put this over here and I want to show you how beautiful this dish is. In Sichuan dishes, what makes Sichuan dishes wonderful hot is because not only you have the sweetness, not only you have the hotness, also you have the sourness and the spiciness because in Sichuan it's hot and muggy. So you want to have some dish a very, very spicy, very appetizing to perk up your appetite. Now, one, <laughs> one of the most common spices in Chinese cooking is ginger. And in the West, you love fried and ginger. <laughs> in China, we love garlic and ginger. They always go hand in hand, just like fried and ginger. <laughs> Let us take a look at how many faces that you will expect from ginger. Look at this beautiful pinkish flower. This is ginger flower. And a lot of people don't realize this beautiful thing has a very, very ugly beginning. This is ginger root. This is something along with garlic, one of the most popular, most widely used spices and seasoning all over China. When you buy fresh ginger, make sure it's very important to look for waxy, shiny skins, firm, not soft. No sign of dehydration. If you pick up a piece of ginger like this, a sign of dehydration, that means this has been in a store for at least two and a half centuries, and you don't want it, okay? Very important. When you buy this, you can snap off a tiny bit because this is enough to smoke your hair. All you need is about a piece like this. When you use this, you can peel it, slice it up, you can julienne them, you can mix them, you can chop them, you can put them in soup, you can flavor them. Now, I want to show you something. When I was a little kid, my mother always buy me little snacks like this. This is salted ginger as a snack. Also, you can make ginger into candies. This is candy ginger. I want to offer this to you. Please take it. You don't want it? I'm going to keep it for myself. Here, we also have pickled ginger, pickled with sugar and vinegar, it's basically a sweet and sour ginger. Like this, usually served with a Chinese thousand-year-old egg. Today, we're going to show you how to use ginger. <laughs> I am going to show you how to use a little this piece of ginger. Now, first of all, I'm going to chop this up. Now, in order to have fresh ginger, you should not do it ahead of time. So you see, the ginger is getting very excited. If you do it too early, that thing will get bored. So you should do it in the last minute. Put it right here. And then garlic. You remember I told you, Fred and ginger? Garlic and ginger. Set it aside. This particular dish I'm going to show you is one of my favorite too. I all have all kind of favorite. I don't really know which one is my favorite. I've been telling people I'm so confused. Every time I do something, I'm confused. <laughs> this particular dish I call dry fry green beans. And I explain to you why I call it dry fry. I use one pound of green beans. You see this? I trim the end off and I cut it in half. This is about this long. And then I am going to put this in hot oil first to let it dry fry at about 350 degrees, okay? Just do it very, very carefully, like this. The idea of doing this, I am going to dry it. Wow! <laughs> I am lucky to be two and a half miles away. <laughs> very, very important. Dry it over medium heat, okay? The idea of doing this is, you are cooking it at a slightly lower temperature. This way, you are drying it and cooking at the same time. You are not drying the darn thing and you're bed you for three days. Okay? We'll set it aside, let it dry for a little while. How are you gonna take it out? When it turns wrinkle, slightly brown wrinkle, it's mature enough to leave the walk. Then you take it out. <laughs> Here, I have some ground pork. And I'm gonna, I have about a quarter of a pound to three quarter of a pound of ground pork. You can chop it up. You can start with pork, then you use two knives. And 
then you do it like this, then now it's all ground. You are once again grounded. <laughs> and then also I have about two tablespoons of dry shrimp and all these spices. I'm gonna set it aside. Let me take a look at what's happening with my green beans. Can you see that? It is absolutely mature enough to leave. Look at this. Isn't it wonderful? We'll put it aside and put it right over here. I'm, I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to take this off. Very carefully, because hot oil. And then we're going to show you today how to make two dishes in no time. Now, this one I'm going to do green, dry green bean with ground pork. And also, I'm going to do a pepper beef. And I'm going to show you how to do both of them simultaneously. It's going to be fun. Watch. <laughs> Here, this beef, I have about three quarter pound of beef, one small bell pepper, green, one small red, and some green onion and some chili pepper. Now, first of all, I'm going to marinate my beef first, OK? Soy sauce and a tiny bit of cornstarch. Marinate this. If you want, you can use your hand to do it particularly when you do it at home, okay? Otherwise, you use a fork to do it. Now, all these ingredients right here, beef, bell pepper, what makes this dish unique is marinated with soy sauce, cornstarch, and a tiny bit of white pepper. And also, when I do it, I have green pepper, red pepper, chili pepper, black pepper, citron pepper, all kind of pepper, pepper, <laughs> pepper, beef. Now, when this is hot enough, we are going to show you something exciting. We're going to cook two dishes. I hope I can do it. <laughs> two teaspoons to be exact. And two <laughs> teaspoons to be exact. Wow. And we set this aside. Get your spatula ready on one side. Get your spatula ready on this side. Are you ready? <laughs> OK. In this particular wok, I have ginger and garlic, dry shrimp. For those hot and spicy people, chili pepper. Look at this. What makes it hot is the seed. If you want it to be extra hot, keep the seed, OK? And then ground pork, OK? Let it cook for a little while. I have a pot holder here. Hold on to this. And then over here, I am going to cook the beef. First, I have a tiny bit of ginger and pepper. Wow, look at this. Beef. And then you cook like this. Wow, look at this. And then you come back here. And then you once again. You don't want to burn the thing, then you come back. And then when this is ready, you put the dry green bean back here, and then you add all the seasoning. I have about one tablespoon of soy sauce, tiny bit of about one tablespoon of chili oil, and then you come back. <laughs> and then you come back. See, both dishes cooked simultaneously. And then how easy, I'm gonna put Leisurely, I'm gonna put some green bell pepper, red bell pepper, right in here. Look at this. This is gonna be a very colorful dish. Look at this, how colorful. Add all the pepper. Black pepper, citron pepper, corn, a tiny bit of salt and sugar. Okay. Thicken this up a little bit. Wow, look at this. Stir, look at this. Let's put this over here. Final touch, a tiny bit of sesame seed oil, tiny bit of sesame seed oil. And then you stir. Wow. Wow. When this is all done, we shut it all off. And then I want to show you how wonderful it is. Here, for the Green bean, we we'll put it over here. Look at how beautiful this is. Beautiful dish. And for the beef, look at this. We we'll put it, serve over rice. Isn't that beautiful?
have a spicy dish. So what is all this hot stuff? What makes it hot? What makes it harder? What makes a dish hardest? Let us take a look at some of these sizzling spices used in Chinese cuisine. Of course, we started out with the most popular, ginger. Fresh ginger. Just in case you can't find it, you can always use ground ginger powder, but most Chinese prefer fresh ginger. The next to it is, of course, garlic. Fresh green onion. Fresh chili pepper. Fresh cilantro, coriander. And then here, we come to some dry spices. Chinese five spices. Fennel, which is part of the ingredient in Chinese five spices. Crushed chili pepper, Sichuan peppercorn, star anise, cute star anise. See this? <laughs> Dry whole chili and also cinnamon, bak. All of these are not only used in Chinese cuisine, but in many other cuisines as well. Now, when I was growing up in Canton, China, my mom always fixed dishes with exotic ingredients. My grandmom always teach me something. Growing up in China is a very exciting experience because I never have any toys. Food is my toy. I learned a lot from my grandmother. Now I would like to meet someone, also learn a lot from her grandmother. Let us give a warm welcome to the renowned expert in Louisiana cuisine chef owner of the Gingerbread House restaurant in Oakland, California, my good friend and long lost cousin, Chef T.J. Robinson. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. See, T.J. is very charming, very sweet, and she loved to smile like me. You see the resemblance? <laughs> now, it's very important that when you do any dish to understand Cooking is a creative art. And TJ, I know that you're very creative and you love to cook. What are you going to show us today? Jambalaya. Jambalaya. <laughs> I love it. In this jambalaya, I know, understand we're going to use a lot of ingredients. So why don't you move over here and then I am going to give you a hand, whatever you need. You just, starting with jambalaya, let's go for some of the basic ingredients in jambalaya. Um, here, I notice that we have some andouille yeah. sausage. Yeah. And in order to make a little bit Chinese style, even though you don't normally use it, I add a tiny bit of Chinese sausage, lap chung, mm, some wonderful. dry shrimp, and also bell pepper, and also some onion. Oh, this is wonderful yes, hand you brought with you. And also we have some shrimp. Now, first of all, we got a nice hot thing here. Why don't you go ahead and I give you a hand? Mm, wonderful. Okay, this how much oil should you know? About two tablespoons. About two tablespoons of hot yeah. oil. This is exactly two this fine. More or less, she said fine. Yes. I am just an apprentice. You're gonna give me this. Okay, you can about you two, can put you can about put it in. Two. About, about two. two. Yeah. Oh about two. perfect. More or less, right? More or less. Yeah. See, I love teaching. I'm a more or oh, less cook. See, more or less. <laughs> I am a more or less. See? We I'm a more or less cook too. See how much in common? You cook it. What are you doing here? We're just stirring it. We're making a roux. Okay, good. Okay, and we're going to stir it. And then the next it. ingredient you use is going to be? Let's put some of the onions in onion. here. Onion, that's yeah. good. Onion. Yes, and then we'll put the sausage after that. After that, with mm -hmm. sausage. Why we're waiting and for the onion to uh, brown? Can I uh, help you? Please, I was just going to ask you to check that for me. Let's go to this. Why don't you? Now, I understand that you were born and raised in Louisiana. Can you tell me a little bit about what makes Louisiana cuisine unique? Well, I think it's just the flavors and the spices. Um, the, just the whole magical feeling, um, I think. Of course, I'm from Louisiana, but I think that it's just a magical feeling that you get with the flavors, that you get all the spices, you grow them, you dry them. You do, I know that, I understand you do a lot of your own secret spices, too. Oh, yes. Now, how's we the onion coming We have it here, along? over there. Yeah, I want to show you. Oh, this is you. fine. Let's put the onion and the bell pepper in here. I am kitchen oh, helper. Oh, that's wonderful. I need You're a job. This is audition. Can I take this you to the gingerbread audition. house with me? Anytime. I'm oh. looking for a job. Well, wonderful. <laughs> I, I okay. need a job. Okay, that's then, wonderful. Next Let's step. Add Garlic, right. gotta yes, give garlic. a nice magic. This is one of the magical touch. Garlic. Wonderful. This is magic. It's good for you. Okay, let's turn this a, high a little, a little bit, bit higher. Yeah. Oh, perfect. 
Let me see oh. how high. Very high. Good. That's wonderful. And then the now, next step. Let's put the ham. Yes. You brought this with you. Yes. This, what kind of ham is this? Well, that's just a good smoked ham. Smoked ham. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smelling it already smoked your hair. <laughs> What I smoked it? it. I think what it's wonderful. It? Oh, huh? you smoked the yeah. ham yourself? Yes. How do you do it? Give us an well, idea. Well, I have a special little smokehouse that I use. I smoke get the house. fresh ham. Then yes. you can smoke all, smoke all kinds of things. Of and course. the next step... Now let's we'll give our sausage. Sausage. Yes. This is the andouille Yes, smoke. the andouille. Look. That's How a nice smoked sausage also. That's what are the sausage can you use? And then this is the Chinese sausage. Chinese sausage. sausage. Yes. And, and Chinese shrimp. dry shrimp. Yes. See? About a quarter of a cup. Yes. Isn't it already look wonderful? Yeah. Okay, we'll let this cook just for a little while. Stir and yeah. cook. And then we're going to, um, after we let it cook for just a second, we're going to put the rice in there. Okay. Yeah. Use long grain rice. Yes. Sprinkle this. About a half a cup. A little more. A little, a little more, cup. yeah. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. The yeah. whole thing? Why not? The okay, there. Look at that. The there. whole thing. You're going to be in trouble. But that's you okay. Say, that's fine. I am fine. Yes. I don't know if I want to take your drink to the house or not. Yeah. Right. I think Stir I will, this, though. I'll forgive you. Now, another thing now is, we're going to do this. And what then... is the difference between, I heard about Cajun and Creole. What is the difference between Cajun and Creole? Well, I think that Cajun is, is more earthy, um, and I think Creole is more sophisticated. You know, just... I totally agree with PJ. My teacher, <laughs> my mentor. That's just... When, should I add this? One's French. One French. Mm -hmm. This is a brawl. Tell me to stop, PJ, because no, you are the No, keep going. She said keep going. Yeah, about a cup and a half more. A little bit more. A little more, bit more, more, more. All of it. Oh, That's that great. Is perfect. This right. This you need this right. You guessed it. This right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're going to add this. OK, let's get this on here now. OK. So now we'll put the tomatoes in there. Put chopped tomato. One gigantic tomato from Louisiana. <laughs> Okay. And then, when this is all getting ready, we're going to talk we're about gonna, the spices. Yes, we're going to okay. put our spices now, in now. here, you can use all kinds of spices. TJ just told me this is very interesting. This is the cayenne pepper, salt, chili pepper, crushed black pepper. This is a... Uh, thyme. Thyme. This is sage, right. five spice powder, white pepper, and chili pepper. Mm -hmm. And also, if you want, you can also add a tiny bit of these uh, bay leaf. And of course, you have more spices here. This is about 28 spices. Yes. Aside from all this, TJ have concocted these secret spices. 28 spices over there. Okay. I put it all in. Yes, now, and you put yours in too. Let's, let's make some magic here. This, you put yours we in. are creating magic. Go yeah. for it. That's it. It's already Come on. Feels so now, hot. This is supposed hot. to be hot and spicy. It's not so hot we enough. Have, this we is, have to. Wow, well, this is so hot. Here. It is very spicy so hot, now. unbelievable. Okay, we, this is going to be fine. Okay. okay and then we after that, we have to cover this up a little bit. Just right? a little bit, yeah. We'll cover it for a Until little bit. And let's slow the fire just a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah, just lower this fire a little bit. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about when you were growing up, how your grandmother teach you and see whether we have shared the same experience. Because my grandmother teach me how to do deep frying, stir frying, but she never taught me anything about Louisiana cooking because she was born in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about how when you're growing up, how you learn from your grandmother, because I understand that you learned so much from your grandmother. I did, and thank goodness for grandmas, I must say. Um, when, I, when I was a little girl in Louisiana, my grandmother taught me how to sew and cook because I thought she was just really wonderful. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to watch her all the time because she cooked in Louisiana. And I told her I wanted to be a cook. I wanted to be a chef like her. I wanted to make dolls like her. So she was just really special. She is very special to me, too. But Thank anyway, you. let's I take think a so. quick look. And then when it's, oh, it's almost peaking too. All See, as long too. as the rice And then too. we'll put the shrimp on, on top, top for about five minutes. You can, and then cook for another five to ten minutes over yes. low heat. You can line them all up like this. And then in the very last, you can always put a tiny, tiny bit. We can, when it's almost okay. done, yeah, we can always cilantro. put a tiny bit of cilantro on yes. top. Cilantro on top because we've got so many people. So many guests around. Oh, wonderful. We are going to serve a lot more. So today, we, wow. I know everybody in the studio like hot stuff. So we'll make it hot. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at this. Yay. Oh, Yay. Do it. I wow. like that. Can I? May yes. I? Of 
Okay. Well, okay. That's great. When it's all done. It's going to be wonderful. We will show you how gorgeous both of these look. Look at beautiful dish. Cover it up and cook it and make sure it's nice and hot. Look at this. Sizzling and it's hot. DJ. I hope our show today has perked up your appetite <laughs> and make you want to add a little spice to your life. Thank you, TJ. You're marvelous. Can I kiss you one more time? Oh, yes. And thank you. You are, too. For sharing her secret, her grandmother's secret with us. If Yang can cook, you can, too. Join me. Thank you very much.